Good morning, 7 o'clock as you can see. Um, this then is a little prelude to my first YouTube video. Um, my channel is going to be quite a lot of model railway stuff, uh, but I think other things as well in the future. I'll start off with my railway because that interests me a lot at the moment. Um, but I do have a lot of other things on the go music, motorbikes, this sort of thing. Um, and I might move on to that and also just things I want to talk about like like you do. So uh, the first video which will follow this little intro uh, was done quite some time ago and it's not a very good video it was done on an old iPhone that's all I had. Um, it's some months ago I did it now. Uh, and it concerns the railway but the electronics part of it because I run DCC uh, I don't do analog, analog anymore I started off doing analog but uh, I'm very interested in electronics and things like that and like fool around with wires and soldering things that's been most of my working life so uh, that's what I did I had a computer running my train with this program that you can see here on my main office desk uh, which is called iTrain. It's um, Dutch, it's very good. It's not that expensive, it's not extra cheap either. It's not like JMRI for example which is free uh, which I do use in other places on my layout and in my workshop. We'll come to that later in another video. Uh, but this was running on um, an Acer computer, an old one, <laughs> well, old one, a small one, a little tiny box, one of these new mini computer things, and it just, it was pathetic, the computer itself, not the program, the program's very good, but the computer was pathetic, it, it just got worse and worse and worse, so I had to mend it in the end, I have to take things to bits, that's my life, I just, it has to be in bits, otherwise I don't like it, so anyway, I tried and tried with this thing and here's where you, in this next video, <laughs> which is my first, uh, which is not my first because I'm doing this, so this is my first, but it's not my first because I've done others since then. Yeah, anyway, what's coming up now is the way that you finally have to repair these things. I did get it to be satisfactory in the end and this is how I did it. Enjoy. Right then, here's a little video, my first on YouTube, so it'll be pretty grim I expect, but I'll do this one first because, <laughs> because, this is an Acer Revo M1601 computer, it's very small, it's got quite a lot of things on it. And I thought it would be really nice. I've had it for about, oh, I've had it for several months now, maybe a year, nearly, not quite. And I bought it for my uh, railway, my train set, as it were, which I run on DCC with a program called iTrains. And uh, it's Windows 10, well, it was Windows 10. And uh, it worked fine for a while, but then it started to try and do updates. And of course, it's only 32 gigabytes of memory, which I thought for one program, there's only one program in there, there's nothing else, no antivirus, nothing, just the train set, iTrain, which is a tiny program, doesn't cost any at all. And it, it should just work on easily on that, and it was until the update started. Now the updates are so large and Windows 10 is so large that it wouldn't fit on there with the update at the same time as Windows itself, even with nothing in there, just Windows. So I got hold of this little device which is a 64 gig SanDisk SD card which I shoved into it 
And for a while that was okay, I managed to get to use that. But even with that in there, it was just failing miserably and it wouldn't write to it and it would and it wouldn't. Terrible. So I decided to put Linux in it because I trains around anything at all, including Linux and Macs and whatever. So I spent a few days trying to get Linux in there and eventually I got Mint in there. I had to modify the BIOS seriously. It's incredibly complicated and badly written. The BIOS is ridiculous. It, it's totally stupid. If you want to waste your life, get hold of one of these. Anyway, eventually I got it in there, but it wouldn't work properly. The program was <laughs> coughing and choking and the, the, the cursor was dripping across the screen, leaving arrows trailing behind it. So I decided, well, it's a small computer, a small capacity computer. Why not try and get Windows 7 into it, which is going to stop working, but there's only iTrains on there. So why do I care? Well, I've been trying to get Windows 7 on there from an ISO on a USB stick for a day and a half. I have uh, an external CD driver, a disk machine, and I have several real proper Windows 7 disks. This thing won't accept any of them, that the CD player will not run and install Windows. The BIOS just won't let it do it. Doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter what what do you put in? It'll drive you mad, it won't do it. It will start from a USB stick, like this. But every time I start, this is the only one I've got to work. And it just stalls in the middle. As soon as little coloured balls come at the beginning of Windows 7, it stalls and stops. And you can wait all day, nothing happens. I've tried that many times. I've tried that with six different ISOs of six different Windows 7 installation disks. It doesn't work. And no, it doesn't work on one of these either, a 32 or an 8 or a 4, whatever. It doesn't work. But I found the solution. And the solution is very simple. First of all, wish I'd thought of it before, really. It's done pretty stupid. Take those out, put them there. And lean over here and get a small screwdriver. Now, got to take the memory out for this. Just underneath. It's an ordinary. Uh, if you can get it, if you can get your fingernails under the screw, you can clean. Take that out. Going to need that later. If you can get it out. Come on, that's come quite tight fit. There we are. So I've got that out. And now we can take the top off. That doesn't. You just pushed on that in. And now we need. Um, to go somewhere else for this, so we'll uh, stop this for now and I'll just take it outside and show you what to do. Uh, right, now then, we're outside now. We have to go outside because you need something solid to do this repair with. Um, it's not an easy thing to do because you need quite a bit of muscle to do it. But in actual fact, if you take one of these, this here, and you do that, and turn it over to the other side, just has to be evenly done. And all the frustration comes out. And it'll work a lot better after this because, oh dear, one well, of those capac condensers fallen off there. I wonder if that'll make any difference. Oh dear. Might be able to solder that back on later on, but anyway, I just have to. Get this lovely machine and uh, yes, I think, I think we've modified that suitably. And I'm sure now, if we plug that back in, it's going to give the desired result. Of course, when I say plug it in, I do mean plug it into the local tip into the recycling bin, of course, not into the um, ordinary thing. So uh, here we are. Uh, how to repair a Revo. Lovely.